Good morning and welcome to Together in God, a media ministry of Grace in St. John's Lutheran Churches of the ELCA. We are excited to share with you today God's message of love and hope for all. Today's service is brought to you by Grace Lutheran Church at 202 West Grand Avenue in Eau Claire. Please join us now in worship. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today is a day we call Christ the King's uh, Sunday. It's kind of an odd uh, service because we make the bold declaration Christ is King and then sp spend the rest of the service explaining how he's not like any king uh, you've ever met. And so the hymns will help us to do that. The prayers may help us to do that. The sermon, we hope, will help to do that. I want to tell you about a wacky idea I have, and I need your help to do it. On Saturday, December 6th, there's a thing called the Run Santa Run. And it's a bunch of people who are going to run a bunch of steps, and it goes right around our church. So I was thinking, what can we do so we let them know we're here? And this is my, I, my crazy idea. All right, can you help me? Will you help me? That we dress up somebody. You're going to love this. Hold on to that, okay? Somebody can be dressed up like Mary. And another person might be... Ugh, a shepherd. You want to be a shepherd? And what should I be? I think I will be an angel. <laughs> what do you think? I have wings too. I'm not going to put the wings on. So here's my idea. When the people are running around our church, we'll get a bunch of people to dress up like the people at the scene where Jesus was born. We'll have a Joseph. We'll have a Mary. We'll have shepherds. We'll have wise men. We'll have angels. And when the people run by, we'll cheer for them with signs that say things like, make haste, run the race swiftly, follow your star. What do you think? Good? I'm glad you like it. And there's three reasons I think this would be a good idea. And these are the people I want to come and sign up to do it. So they're the ones we're really hunting for, although you could come too. We have costumes. It's like I was raiding my parents' attic. There's costumes of stuff I found. Three reasons we couldn't do it. One, sometimes think, people think that people in church are just a bunch of cranky people. And we want to show that we know how to laugh and have fun. So that's a good reason. Second is because this is a holiday run, but I don't think Jesus is going to be running in it. There'll be Santa, there'll be the abominable snowman, maybe an elf or two. But we want to remind them, well, Jesus is a big part about why we celebrate Christmas. In fact, he's the biggest part. And so by, by doing this, we'll remind them of that. And then the third good reason, how did she keep it on? That's what I don't know. <laughs> My halo isn't falling off. I don't know what's up with you, Mary. <laughs> and the third very good reason is because the reason these people are running is because there's something called cancer that hurts people a lot. And it's hurt people we love a lot. And so we want to support them as they try to raise money so that it can't hurt people in the future. And so those three good reasons are why some of these people are going to show up at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning or Saturday morning and be silly with me. And if I don't get a Virgin Mary, I'm going to be Mary. You think I, can I try it? Tell me if I look like a good Mary. Can we stay in your inn? Oh my gosh, I have made static galore in your hair, darling. Let's say a prayer. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that laughter for you is also a form of holiness. And we pray that we might Pull this off and remind people that you're why we gather at Christmas time and that you desire the health and well-being of all. Support us 
encourage some folks to actually sign up and let us be your witnesses in the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoops. That wasn't how that was supposed to work. I knew I couldn't keep it on forever. Thank you so much for coming up, your very brave children. Back to your seats. The reading today is from Colossians 1, 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or powers or rulers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Word of God, word of life. According to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. 
Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. People stood by, watching, and the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he's the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the others rebuked him, saying, Do, not, do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence and condemnation, and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you know that in my previous life, I, before I started my position here, I was a college professor? Some of you know that because you read my delightful blog this past week in which I described uh, the student typos I got to see over the year. It's on our website. I taught many areas related to God and what God is doing in the world. And one of the things that regularly the students found helpful was a very simple phrase to help them think about who God is and what God is up to. Kind of sounds like something Forrest Gump would say, um, but it's this. God is as Jesus does. God is as Jesus does. If you want to know what God is like, watch what Jesus does. And that will be your most solid clue. The writer from Colossians that Barb read for us uh, makes a similar point using different language. He says that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. Again, if you want to know what God is about, pay attention to Jesus, in whom, Paul says, the fullness of God is pleased to dwell. This has practical implications. If somebody tells you, as some Christians do, that God is primarily a judge, watching your every move, looking for you to step a little out of step so that you can be smacked upside the head, and you want to know if this is true or not, God is as Jesus does. Watch what Jesus is doing. Is this what Jesus was about? Of course, the answer is no. He constantly was hanging out with, with, with sinners, and his message to them was not primarily one of judgment, but one of mercy. He reveals himself as a king, but a king of love. And so, you can with confidence say, no, the God you speak to me about is not the God that I know in Jesus. Or somebody might say, you know, however the world is, that's exactly how God wants it to be. So you look around, uh, puzzled by suffering in the world, puzzled by why some people live their lives in hunger while others uh, have more than enough for what they need, and you wonder, is this what God wants for the world? Is the way the world is the way the world, the way God wants the world to be? So what do you do? You look at Jesus because God is as... Okay, good. <laughs> B minus. Um, <laughs> you look at Jesus because God is as Jesus does, right? And you see that Jesus while accepting people as they were, did not accept the world as it was and was constantly seeing, trying to turn the world upside down or maybe turn it right side up again. And so since God is as Jesus does, 
we know that God is about the transformation of our lives, the transformation of our community, the transformation of the world. Perhaps the oddest things that Christians say in this regard is that the clearest place to understand what God is up to is looking at the cross. But that's the place where Jesus strangely is most kingly. Right? As I said in the beginning of the service, we say Jesus is king and then it spent a lot of time explaining how it's not, as we might imagine, given the kings and leaders that we know. And so if the whole of life reveals God, somehow on the cross we see most clearly what God is like, God's life is like, what God's will is like. God opens God's heart up to us on the cross. So we're going to do something that some of you love and some of you don't. That's all right. Both of those are fine. I'm going to read to you the text that I just read and ask you to listen to it. And then I want you to think about if these 222 words were the only words you had to know what God is like, what would you know about God? Is that clear? If these words I'm to read to you were the only thing you knew about God, what would that be? When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his clothing. And the people stood by, watching, and the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he's the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since we are under the same condemnation, sentence of condemnation, and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we're getting what we deserve for our deeds? But this man has done nothing. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So think about that. If these 222 words were the only words you had to tell you about what God is like, what might you think? And then he gets out the microphone. Oh no, you know what that means. Sarah has something and then Rose has something. Sarah, what do you think? Grateful. Grateful. Say more about that. It, it's such a pleasure that God died for us and for our sins, and so I'm grateful for it. Good. Right? You're grateful that he's offering himself so profoundly for us. Do you have something else? I say forgiveness. No matter what you are or where you've been, you're forgiven. Excellent. All right. So we see a God ready to forgive in the hardest of moments. Yeah. One minute, Roger. I'll figure out how to get there to you. He shows his love. He shows his love for people and uh, for society in general. It doesn't matter who you were, where you were. Good. He's showing his profound love for people, even his enemies, right? The people he says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. What they're doing is they're crucifying him in that moment. Any others? The words of the, the, from, in the hymn of the beautiful Savior hymn that they just sang, 
is truly a, a, a God, uh, you know. You see that in the story of Jesus, that he's a beautiful savior, but beauty in a way that we don't often define it, right? In his utter givingness, yeah. Now I'm giving me a little exercise. I'm gonna get him and then I'll get you, okay? I think after we got done talking, we'll all be in paradise. What do you see of God in this little story of Jesus? I see that he's a beautiful person, that he loves and trusts, and he always, always keeps his promise. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, one minute, Stacy. I'm the, the the advantage of this kind of preaching is I get steps too. So get close to that ten thousand required every day. That he didn't have to prove himself. He knew that he was the son of God and that he was there to show that you know, he was going to be put under pain for us, but he was going to be in paradise and he was there. He didn't need to prove himself. He was God. Good. All right. So he didn't, he didn't, he, he was so confident in who he was that he didn't let the circumstances rob him of his identity. Good. One more. Maybe Marissa, it's her birthday and all. Oh, did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> Mitch got one. So I wonder, how did he get the criminal to ask to be brought to paradise? The criminal knew he was guilty, knew he deserved that, and yet he was able to ask for that forgiveness. So I think Christ inspired that in that criminal. Something about his presence that we have to imagine because it's not explained explicitly in the text, so it's a question that arises out of us the text. But there's something in, in Jesus, his way of carrying himself, his way of relating to others that actually invited this criminal to, to speak the words of trust he spoke. Right? So, if God is as Jesus does, and the cross is one of the key things Jesus does, you've told me that we learn that God is a God of love, a God whose beauty is different than we expect, a God who, who draws out of us trust that we wouldn't naturally have on our own, and a God who, who brings us to paradise, to a place where we could never get to on our own. I think that's probably enough uh, for the day. Let me just read a little bit on what Paul says in another place that, about how this is an odd way of being king. In 1 Corinthians, he says something like this. There's a bit of paraphrasing here. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Some demand signs, others look for wisdom, but we pre preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to some and foolishness to others, but to those whom God has called Christ, the power of God, Christ, the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God, interesting phrase, the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Amen.
Thank you for being part of our Together in God worship service. Your prayers and financial support are always deeply appreciated. Please tune in again next Sunday at the same time or join us in person at 10 a.m. in the church. Remember the 9 a.m. coffee hour. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.